Well, joining me now is Dr. Bruce Hamilton, the Chief of Sports Medicine at Aspatar, a FIFA accredited sports medicine hospital here in Qatar. Dr. Hamilton, why are these cases not being picked up before it comes to this uh, tragic case? Yeah, good afternoon, Joanna. It's uh, obviously events like this are tragic, and our thoughts go out to the um, friends and family uh, uh, and uh, wish them well through this difficult period. Um, this is a very difficult uh, issue and uh, we know that sport uh, carries some risk and we know that uh, 95, 80 to 90 percent of people that die in sport will die of a cardiac cause. While we don't know what went on here, we know that uh, one 200,000 people will die per year of heart related causes while participating in sport. The challenge of trying to prevent that really takes two fronts. First front is uh, looking at screening and trying to pick up those athletes at risk before uh, they have an event such as this. And the second element is ensuring that on the pitch side there's appropriate and skilled personnel and equipment to enable the management of a situation should it arise. Obviously you can't talk about individual cases because you're not the, the player's doctors, uh, but is it a case that in these uh, players who, who do have heart attacks that they have some sort of predisposing condition? Yeah, that's right. It's, um, it, there's a difference between a 25-year-old fit and healthy person um, and a 45-year-old weekend warrior. We know that the 45-year-old will have an underlying atherosclerotic heart disease and that's usually what causes heart attacks in those types of people. In the young person it's a combination of both uh, participating in intense sport and having an underlying condition. We know the most common cause of death uh, in a young person from in, uh, related to sport is due to cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and that has an incidence of about 1 in 500 people. So 1 in 500 people out there playing sport will have this underlying condition that predisposes them to sudden cardiac death. There's a number of other causes as well, but if you just look at that number and you consider the number of people playing all sports, let alone football, uh, there's a lot of people at risk out there. One in 500 is, is certainly an incredible number. Um, Fabrice Mwamba was uh, one of the cases that, uh, well, luckily he survived. That was just a few weeks ago. But there was a, a, a cardiologist in the stands that, uh, that really saved his life. Do you think that more can be done to train first responders? I think, as I mentioned, there's a real understanding that uh, screening, uh, while uh, very useful in terms of trying to pick up people at risk, it, won't, it will never pick up all of those people at risk of having a heart-related issue on the field. Therefore, you've got to be prepared on the sideline. And that's being well recognised now in most sports around the world, where certainly at an elite level, uh, the recognition of having an AED or an automatic external defibrillator, as well as qualified personnel on the sideline, is really incumbent on the organisation to provide that to ensure the safety of those high profile players. All right, Dr. Bruce Hamilton, Chief of Sports Medicine at Aspatar, thanks very much for talking to us.